Say what? You have questions about leaders? Hold on, here we go. That's like butter. Well, howdy friends, Brian Fleshing of Mad River Outfitters, the Midwest Fly Fishing Schools, Ohio Fly Fishing Guides, and Mad River Travel. And that's it, and welcome back to another one of our Q&A videos. As always, folks, we appreciate you being here. We really appreciate it. And uh, th also thanks for the support of Mad River Outfitters and all those said companies. Remember that we don't have sponsors here on our YouTube channel, so it's with your support that allows us to continue to do this. So let's jump right in. And we've had a rash of questions uh, about leaders in the past few months. And no, I've, I don't have a rash, but we've had a rash of questions about leaders, which to be honest with you, we always do. It's uh, your second most important piece of gear. Actually, it's arguably your most important piece of gear and stay tuned. We're gonna have that argument coming up real soon. And uh, it's also the single mis uh, most misunderstood part of the sport. And it's really super easy, but I understand. Um, so just a couple of quick questions. We'll have a couple more coming up in a Q&A over the next couple weeks. And then, of course, uh, 2022 is the official year of leaders. So anyway, let's jump right in. Tyler Merwin. Oh, did I do this? You know, I... Oh, dear God. Can I get a tissue, please? Yeah, I thought I was going blind. Seriously. Okay, so here we go. And <clears throat> Tyler Merwin sends us this question. So Tyler says, hey there, I've been practicing fly casting in the backyard and inevitably got a knot or two in my fly line. Well, first of all, Tyler, uh, make sure that you understand how that happens. Uh, it's usually caused by creep. Uh, most people call them wind knots, lefty, uh, the grandfather of modern day fly fishing and our great friend Lefty Cray always said, uh, most people call them wind knots. Lefty said there's no such thing as a wind knot. They're called bad casting knots. And they come from creeping forward too soon, which almost everybody does. And of course we have a video about that and it's linked right here. Or if you can't see that, it's down in the description. So anyways, make sure that you stop tying those wind knots by creeping forward. So anyways, I didn't realize it immediately, which led to memory set, and now I'm wondering if there's a good way to remove kinks like this without damaging the leader. And uh, let's see, you said you got a knot in your fly line, I'm assuming that you meant leader. So, um, and you, he has, a Tyler has attached a picture here. So, um, yes. And it still amazes me that a lot of folks don't know that there is such a gadget called a leader straightener. Okay, and this is the one that we currently sell here at the shop. It's made by the Loon Company. And it has a ring for attaching to your vest if you like, a leather exterior, and then gum rubber on the inside. And this is truly one of the most popular items that we sell. It's amazing. How many of these we sell and of course loon as always does a great job uh, mine is in my vest at all times and yes i am a vest guy i get that question a lot i use a vest typically when i'm trout fishing because i carry a lot of stuff and i will use a sling pack uh, when i say if i run down to the river right here smallmouth fishing or carp fishing um, uh, i'm usually wearing a sling pack because i carry much less but here is my old leader straightener. Uh, looks like I could use a little glue on there. I've probably had this thing for probably 30 years. And in fact, I bought this at Dan Bailey's Fly Shop in Livingston, Montana. It's got Dan's name right there. Uh, so I've had this thing probably 30 years. But yes, you can straighten a leader with your fingers. When you pull a leader out of the package and it's all coiled up, if you don't own a leader straightener, you can run it through your fingers and the heat from your fingers will help to straighten that leader out, okay? Uh, but <clears throat> if you do it too aggressively, you can burn your fingers. And then the other thing a leader straightener can do, 
Um, it, you know, you're not gonna fix that kink that Tyler has here with your fingers. You may be able to straighten it out with a leader straightener, and all you do is put the leader inside this, squeeze really tight, and run that leader right through that leader straightener. It straightens it right out, but the other thing that that gum rubber does that your fingers won't is it can t kind of take some of the sheen off of a monofilament. Um, and, and that can help in uh, reducing glare off of the monofilament. Monofilament, as opposed to fluorocarbon, does reflect light, whereas fluorocarbon allows light to pass through. So a monofilament is much more visible in the water and running your leader or your tippet section at least through a leader straightener can help take some of that sheen out. Now, Tyler, whether or not a leader straightener would straighten out what you have there, that looks like fairly heavy monofilament, and it might be a little too heavy for that size of fly. You may or may not be able to get that kink out, and then Tyler goes on to say, or should I just cut the tip section, meaning the tippet section, the last diameter, and replace it? Well, try a leader straightener first, and if that doesn't cut it, then yes, of course, you're gonna have to cut that tippet and replace it, which is a good idea to do anyways. I mean, your tippet is almost always your weakest link, and therefore making sure that your tippet is good, intact, and as strong as it can be, reliable as it can be, uh, is definitely worth doing on a regular basis anyway. So, but I just wanted to share that with you for those of you that might not know about a leader straightener. So again, thank you, Tyler, and send us your information and we'll get you out that hat and fly box. And next we have Adrian Cazares from Bosque Farms, New Mexico. And Adrian says, hi, Matter River Outfitters. I'm from New Mexico and I've been wanting to get into fly fishing. I've watched many of your videos and I've learned a lot from them. Thanks for watching. I've seen other videos on YouTube that have also been very informative. Of course, there's a ton of great information on YouTube. I saw a video where the instructor said it is okay to attach a different size tippet to a butt section that is also a different size. For example, attaching a 1X tippet to a 4X butt section. My question for you, is this true or false? Well, Adrian, this is actually a question that I get via email a lot. Uh, we, we've talked about it here on the channel, but I know we have a lot of videos and they're hard to wade through all of them. But let me explain this to you and to all of the rest of you that have questions about this. Um, the, first, the first way that this is phrased, um, can you attach a different size tippet to a butt section that is also a different size? Well, yes. But then you go on to say, can you, for example, can you attach a 1X tippet to a 4X butt section? I've said this before, I'll say it again, and we'll say it many, many, many more times. The secret to a proper leader is that you must keep the taper intact. And then the second thing I've said before, you cannot ask a skinny kid to push a fat kid up a hill. Just can't do it, okay? And I don't mean, uh, you know, to disparage skinny people or fat people. It's just an analogy. Um, you must keep the taper of a leader intact, okay? Your leader is a pipe that carries energy to the fly and dissipates energy, okay? And you typically have a butt section and a tippet section. That tippet section is the thinnest diameter, almost always, except in rare cases where we would attach a shock tippet for saltwater fishing or a shock or bite tippet, say if you're pike fishing or musky fishing. But the tippet section is the last piece to which you tie the fly and it's the thinnest diameter in your leader. Okay, so for example, if this was a 4X tippet, okay, keeping the taper intact means that you, there's probably, whether you tied it or this is a store-bought leader, 
this is a section of 3x. This is a section of 2x. This is a section of 1x. This is a section of 0x. And of course, this is not necessarily to scale or an exact science, but you get the idea. This leader always has to be going from thicker, tapering down to thinner. And your final destination, again, is your tippet, which is the thinnest diameter. So what basically you're saying here is that an instructor said it's okay to attach a different size. So let's say you wanted to make a change. And from the way I read this, you're wanting to attach a 1x tippet and you're asking if I can do this because an instructor told you that you could. I would make a cut here so that that piece of 4x is no longer tippet. It now becomes part of my taper and you are proposing that we could tie on a piece of 1x. It's not in any world that I live in or not on the planet that I know, maybe on some other planet with a different type of gravity or something, I don't know. But no, 4x cannot push 1x. A skinny kid can't push a fat kid. Okay, so the answer is, you know, I don't want to say you can't. You know, this yeah, is America. America. You, can, you can do it if you want, uh, but then uh, we'll be getting an email from you as to why your cast is collapsing or why it's maybe flopping around like a wet noodle or hitting you in the back of the head or hitting your rod tip. 4X, that energy has been dissipated, dissipated, and now you're attaching a big fat pipe. There's not enough energy to fill that pipe and turn over that 1x tippet, okay? If you did want to add 1x tippet, you're gonna have to cut all the way back to where it's approximately 1x, okay? And then, and only then, can you theoretically add that 1x piece of tippet, okay? And for now, you're just gonna have to feel it um, you know, one of the things the industry is lacking right now is a tippet gauge. Um, we used to sell them for years and years and years. There's no, there's not one on the market right now, but I have news for you. Stay tuned because the folks at Loon, Brett and company over at Loon are making us a Mad River Outfitters tippet gauge. So you'll be able to measure your tippets. Stay tuned. Hopefully Loon is going to get that tool to us very soon. So you'll be able to measure and find out where it's approximately 1x, you'd have to make a cut, and then you can add that 1x tippet. You cannot just willy-nilly add 1x tippet randomly, okay? That's just not how a leader works. That's not how the transfer of energy or the dissipation of energy through that leader works. So uh, that's a big fat false. Um, if that's in fact what that instructor was saying, I'm so sorry, but he is just absolutely dead wrong and may not understand the basic physics and basic mechanics of a leader. So um, there you have it. A couple of quick leader questions here in this episode. And Adrian, thanks again. We will ship you out a hat and fly box to Bosque Farms, New Mexico. And we appreciate you being here as always. So be sure to subscribe to our channel, friends. We appreciate it. Thanks for all the support. Thanks for being here. Hit that like button and stay tuned because we've got a lot more coming at you. Oh, and remember to send your questions to admin at madriveroutfitters.com. Again, thanks for being here. Stay tuned. We've got a lot more coming at you. Oh, and if you like this video, I, I'm sure you're gonna like this one, and you're gonna you're gonna love this one. That's one of my favorites of all time, or at least the past couple months. Oh, and what else? Do we have T-shirts or something? Do we get new?